Welcome back to the Tribute Games Podcast. The Tribute Games Podcast is uh, recorded here in our studios in Montreal, where Tribute Games are a small independent company. And uh, this podcast is pretty much us talking about making games and uh, being in the industry and how, how is the game sausage is made. I'm Yannick Belzil. I'm a writer and social media manager. Uh, I'm Dom 2D and I'm sick. I've got a cold, but I do game design. Uh, Justin Sear, animation and game design. Stefan Boutin. Uh, general artist. General artist? Yeah. General artist? Yes. yes. We mean, salute you, general, general artist. Five-star general artist. <laughs> yes, of course. Uh, guys, how are you? I'm good. Uh, I'm good. doing pretty good. Nice. We're back after a small hiatus because um, as people were away and we we actually had like uh, 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 power outages at our studio. So for, for a week, like for a couple of days, we just could not uh, record a podcast, which is when we had planned to record another episode. But we're back now. I think it was a podcast way of saying we don't want to do a podcast without Justin. <laughs> <laughs> yes, uh, as well. But, you know, maybe we'll get uh, the fabled GF on episode one day so he can talk to us about programming and how it works. But uh, in the last couple of weeks, um, Justin, you were away. You were somewhere in our globe. Where was I? Japan! Yes. <laughs> yes. yes. Yeah, that's right. Uh, me, John, uh, his girlfriend, Jean, and my friend, Mike, we all went to Japan for two yes. weeks. But uh, you did a lot of fun uh, video game related stuff there. Like, Yeah, it wasn't all just for uh, for fun. We did, uh, we went to TGS. How was that? That was amazing. You went to the Tokyo Game Show, not the the sketch show uh, shown in the Tree Rock, uh, the girly show. The Definitely actual not. Freak show. No, this was the Tokyo Game Show. Uh, that was pretty cool. We only went for one day. So we really didn't have a chance to take it all in. But you've been like to E3 and yeah. the impacts and stuff like that. So how does it compare? Like it compares pretty well. Like I mean, it's it's a trade show. It's huge. You just you know, uh, it's it's kind of out of the way. Like it was like a we had to take like the train out for almost like an hour out of Tokyo. Uh, along the way, we passed uh, Disneyland Tokyo, just huge Ferris wheels and attractions. But once we got there, it was uh, just this gigantic warehouse. And you know, the first thing we saw when we walked in was. Hideo Kojima uh, showing off the new Metal Gear, just sheeps flying off in balloons. It was like, all right, that's what sets the show off. Yeah, that's Japan for you. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and the rest of it was pretty amazing. So uh, what about cosplay? Cosplay. Because you were in cosplay. Like <laughs> yeah. Uh, it's kind of nice to see a place where, uh, like, I don't know, they have a different take on it. Like, for them, I guess, like, I don't know. It, it's a cultural thing. Like, booth babes aren't kind of frowned upon or it's not as controversial no it's more like the contest right the 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 booth with the most booth babes is the one that wins dgs right yeah but i mean it's 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 like it's just not seen as something like taboo or you know ooh, check her out it's just like accepted yeah. and i think that's kind of cool like it, it's kind of nice to go around and just seeing like all these crazy cosplay you know girls you know, just, you know, doing like the show barkers and getting people to come to the stands. And it's like, yeah, this is accepted. Any of the, like the large booths, it was the same as any other trade show. You had to wait like two, three yeah. hours just to get in. So because we had limited time, we couldn't afford to. So like, I didn't get a chance to play the new 3DS. I didn't get the chance to play Monster Hunter. I didn't play Bloodborne. Because if I did, it's like, that's the only thing I would have done. Yeah. And all these things are going to come out eventually. So it's like, eh, I'd rather just kind of sit and talk. Uh, I think definitely a show highlight would have been the indie booth that mm. was amazing how big was it um it was kind of in the middle not especially big but enough room to walk around and stuff uh there's actually like a some canadian developer that was there too nice. um and onion games they were kind of cool Who, what do you do uh million onion hotel <laughs> like <laughs> they've got their very uh onion themed uh, great onion branding going yeah on of course yeah. um and then uh, i got to meet i'm trying to remember his name tez okano mm -hmm. he's a guy that worked at sega yeah he's actually the guy that made uh sega gaga it's like this weird like it almost looks like a parody game and with lady gaga <laughs> with Lady Gaga in it. It's, uh, yeah, it's just this wacky, wacky game. And I always thought it was like some Dujin game because that's really what it looks like. Mm -hmm. And it turns out that's an official Sega product. And that was his brainchild. Uh, and then he, after 20 years of working in the business, decided to kind of, you know, cut the ties and go independent. And I was like, wow, that's really cool. And he had this MSX style like shooter. It was amazing. I actually got to, you know, sit and talk to him. He spoke a little English and what very basic Japanese I could. We kind of just, sat and chat and that was fun how much how much uh 
English were able to speak there. Oh, actually, that's one of the sort of things I was compared to China. Compared to China, because you went to China as well. Yeah, well, you were there. Yeah, yeah, I know. China. So the, compared to China, was it? It was probably about the same. Ooh. I mean, yeah, not. I mean, we were always kind of told like if you go there, you'll get by on English, and not so much the case. It was, uh, yeah, it was pretty rough. But, you know, you have a lot of pictures on menus. Just Ooh. point and this, this. I'm sorry, I'm looking up Onion Games because I know I heard about it. I, yeah. It's a new company, right? Yeah, fairly it's, new. It's, I know someone famous is working there. Like a, a famous game designer. Yeah, like the, 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 I think the games that they had worked on are one that's kind of a cult hit is like Chulips. Yeah, Chulips. That's, that's the, the one. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, that game was insane. Yeah, it was just a game about like having to kiss as many people as you could. <laughs> yeah, but if you, I think if you got slapped a couple times, you it was game over and you had to start the whole thing over. Yeah, and you had to kiss everybody in the village, including like old ladies and and little girls, and it was a bit creepy. But yeah, yeah that's that's the game I was thinking yeah. about. So like Until you get to little girls, that seemed like a nice, fun game for the whole family. <laughs> but you're, you're a little boy yourself. Anyway, oh, okay. So then it's all good. It's acceptable. So yeah, I met that guy. And uh, you've told us that you were able to do some, to do some really cool retro games sh shopping over there. Yeah, we went to Akihabara, which is like nerd heaven. It's it's like a like a like a district just out of uh, Tokyo there, and it's where like all the shops are. Like you've got like. Arc like many level arcades, like it's like you know eight floors, and that's like one of many. Sega had an arcade, uh, Taito had an arcade there. Too uh, bad they didn't have nine. <laughs> nine floor would have been because if it's geek heaven, yeah, yeah, it would have been cool. Yeah, <laughs> they were just one floor shy of being perfect. Jesus. Yeah, what are you? But uh, no, it's it's it like electronic stores. Uh, all the gashapon, those little like little capsule toys, mm -hmm. uh, everywhere. It's just. Rows and rows and alleys of just cool shit. Like it's it's amazing, and like everyone that goes there are all kind of the same too. Like you really feel like you kind of belong, like you're amongst your own. It's hard to imagine eight floors of Justin's everywhere. <laughs> yeah. yeah, one's enough. So like a whole eight floors is a, a bit much. Also, you, Jonathan told me that you both bought mystery NES games. Yeah, yeah. That's uh, eventually we'll, like we'll make a Twitch out of it. Like, cause you, you, I, how did that happen? Like, you just bought like cartridges and you don't know what's on it. Like, pretty much. Like, yeah, based on the cover. Yeah, exactly. We're like, oh, this is cool, and if it was cheap enough too, because yeah. uh, one store in particular that was nice was uh, Super Potato. Mm -hmm. We had been told about that place, and it's like a a, a retro theme shop, but especially so. Like, you go again, like four floors or something, and each floor had like a kind of a theme. This is the eight bit floor, the sixteen bit floor, the handheld floor, and like they have so much like paraphernalia and just like toys from like all the different eras and things. Uh, just displays of, of games running nonstop. Like it's, and it's this tiny, tiny little shop. Like it's, it's not especially big, but clientele nonstop. Like a lot of gaijins like us. But, uh, yeah, we had been told about Super Potato and it kind of lived up to the reputation. Uh, we easily spent hundreds of dollars on retro games. Uh, and then we saw, yeah, let's pick up like one game each that we don't know what it is for like That's three cool. bucks. And I feel like I, I would just put, most Japanese cartridges, Famicom cartridges on a wall and just use that as decoration because it's just fucking beautiful. Yeah, because they had like a different standard than we do, didn't they? They had like, they were allowed to pick the colors and the sh even the shapes yeah. to a degree that they wanted. Yeah, and the colors of the carts are all different. Like, it's not the gray, boring gray of the NES. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it's way better. It's less like a, a, a sad industrial <laughs> machine. Yeah, exactly. Like, you know, yeah. The NES is, even though I, I love, uh, I, I guess... Why do you think the the, the old NES loved that? Would they wanted to make sure that it was like a cool electronic thing and not a toy? I think it had a lot to do maybe also with kind of like reinventing video games because like after the crash, like video games was like a bad word. And mm -hmm. that's why they branded it as like an entertainment, entertainment system. system. There ah, you go. Yeah. So maybe that had a lot to do with it. And they did that in like 83. And now... Just now, Xbox and PlayStation are catching up on them and trying to do <laughs> the same thing, like yeah. having all your TV shits and yeah. Yeah. and games in the same place. So thanks for your travel. Sure, That's yeah, yeah, yeah. Good set. That's all we're gonna get. Yeah, well, <laughs> it's another thing about Japan. Go. Oh, the food's really good. Nice. Uh, and you bought this shirt. Yeah, well, actually, I never do any shopping, so I'm wearing uh, Monster Hunter, of course. Uh, a Monster Hunter polo. Yeah, it's not bad. It's um, good. It's good. 
Yeah. Has a little dragon on, on the chest. And, uh, we call it Rathalos. <laughs> but a little <laughs> dragon. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I can't wait for the next Monster Hunter to come out. It's only this podcast will be all about Monster <laughs> Hunters, whether we like it or not. I'm actually a bit worried about that because he, he pretty much convinced me to start playing it. But I, I want to play it, but I don't want to be that guy. Like, I don't want to. I, I think you will. Damn it. I think you will. You, you will get sucked in. You, Paul, yeah. uh, Jonathan, Justin, like in a Monster Hunter cult. You'll have Letterman jackets made <laughs> for your Monster Hunter crew. Yeah, I think the the end of tribute will coincide with... One Monster Hunter. Yeah, nah. the launch of Monster Hunter. It'll be glorious. Blaze of glory. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. But, but we'll, we'll never get anything done after that. I think there'll be a two weeks where it'll be pretty unproductive, yeah. <laughs> but before entering that, let's all go to the Death Corner. Dev Corner? Dev Corner, yes. What uh, is the Dev Corner, Yannick? Uh, Dev Corner is where we talk about uh, what we're working on right now, what's happening at Tribute Games, and uh, hopefully try to illuminate how uh, games are being made and uh, what is it that we actually work on and how does it make the... It's not all podcasts and trips to Japan here at Tribute Games. <laughs> no, it's mostly power outages and going to your place to watch movies. Yeah, exactly. Because <laughs> that's that's one thing. Like um, We've been working on the <laughs> one part, uh, the prototype. It moved from prototyping for your game to uh, a lot of brainstorming and mm-hmm. funnily enough a fun part of brainstorming can just be uh, watching movies which is what we did so Dom can you tell us like why are we watching movies and what kind of movies we're watching so I, I guess we're trying to pinpoint what kind of sci-fi and what kind of uh, setting we want to give the game um, yeah your game as we've not uh, mentioned uh, someone might not know it's a platformer and it's a sci-fi environment uh, yeah. type of platformer yeah exactly so there's still a wide array of, of places we can go with that. Like we could go super serious and uh, very much uh, Star Trekky, or we can go no, no. <laughs> super cartoony uh, with something more akin to uh, spaceships as Sagittarius. Neither. <laughs> <laughs> something more like Futurama. Yeah. Okay. Uh, that's that's a good place. Yeah. But yeah, you know, we we kind of want to <laughs> look at what's there. Like, uh, what's the name of that TV show we we watch for Farscape? We watch uh, we watch like a almost one episode of Farscape. Almost, <laughs> it was really like the promise of puppet uh, characters. Like it seemed really promising, but uh, it was a hard slog to get rid of the pilot. So not only to uh, besmirch anyone who enjoys Farscape, but we were not uh, able to get through it. It was rough to get into. Although, if you have a suggestion for one episode that is filled with with mm. ships and creatures, we'd love to hear it because yeah. we 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 a big thing for us is looking at. At creatures and puppets and, mm-hmm. in a sci-fi setting. That's the one thing we're really into. So if you have ideas for that, yeah. uh, you can send them uh, either, either at info at tributegames.com. So yeah, we're looking at different things. We watched uh, Silent Running, which is a, a really fun... Uh, not fun. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? It's fun that it exists, but it, 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 it's it a slow-moving movie about a, a, a space hippie in a spaceship with domes. And there are cool robots in there, and they are great. There are great uh, uh, maquettes and uh, really good the photography in it, in it. But otherwise, it's pretty slow moving. Yeah, I think we, it was good to watch though because we we liked the idea of um, kind of uh, biodomes on a spaceship, like having a forest or something on a spaceship. Because we might just do that kind of thing. Like all the levels might be spaceships or something like that, where we still want a variety of things. On, on the spaceships, so having biodomes with like jungles or deserts or stuff like that, this seems pretty pretty cool. But the movie was not super great. Yeah, it's, 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 you, it's was something you sit there with and uh, take in because uh, I guess what we're trying to do is uh, we go and watch sixties and seventies science fiction stuff because yeah. uh, uh, we we all love uh, uh, space marine tough um, human soldiers of science fiction, but. That thing is more than well represented in modern video mm-hmm. games. So we're trying to find something else, something that's more colorful and uh, wilder and hopefully more more fun. alien, right? Yeah, and, and more alien and uh, like um, like that's not that's maybe like the game will will have humanoids, but will not have humans in it at all. And maybe they will all be all fun creatures. We don't yeah. know yet. Or just less than the usual uh, tropes. Like in TV and movies, they always go to humans or like things that are very close to humans, like Klingons or stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Just because of budget and, and, and stuff like that. But uh, we don't have to do that. We can do whatever we want with our little art style so yeah uh, we also watched star crash which was pretty amazing <laughs> better. Better. That, now that was a that was a treat if you never watched star crash i guess it's uh 
it, it's one of those weird the uh, uh, um, rip off of Star Wars that's been made in the wake of Star Wars, but that one it was made in Italy. It stars uh, this lady that's been uh, Carolyn Monroe, mm -hmm. who's been in a ton of Hammer horror movies and in one of the in one of the Roger Moore Bonds. I don't remember one, but she's she's Living Daylights. I think. Living Daylights, yeah. So she's pretty much always dressed up as sort of like Barbarella, so uh, in really uh, small and uh, form-fitting uh, spacesuits. Uh, there's a weird robot that's not graceful at all. There's a David Hasselhoff shows up halfway through as the Han Solo type like, of character. He basically replaces the other main main character because because David Hasselhoff is better than the other yeah. curly yeah. guy. Yeah, the, there's a main character <laughs> that who's really creepy, that's like weird little Hasselhoff. Yeah, real asshole. and a real asshole. But <laughs> they have a lot of fun uh, character design and shape, uh, yeah. spaceship design. So that's pretty much like we're watch, we're, we'll watch anything or at least watch the trailer of anything <laughs> to sample images and try to find so inspiration. There was a, a great amount of uh, wardrobe changes. Yes, yes. Yeah. I really like that. Like <laughs> every every five five different shots, new new costume for uh, and it was a giant girl. Giant robot a woman who throws a oh, sword yeah. at one point. That was pretty crazy. Yeah, yeah. stop motion mean, animation for yeah. absolutely no reason. Yeah. You guys should should go look Star Crash. It's it's on uh look you, at you Star can, Crash. It's on YouTube. Yeah, so. you can. It's one of those movies that's on YouTube and no no one owning their rights <laughs> intervenes no to take it down. No one cares. So uh, go watch it in peace. It's pretty awesome. Good. They put it there. <laughs> Someone's what? Look at these views. Someone's watching it. <laughs> but but it's it's. I mean, we're we're trying to look at everything, but there's nothing that fits what we really want to do. But that's kind of a good thing in a way because we can then find a new a new place for our our style in our game, right? Yeah. But I'm just confused because I always have this kind of memory idea yeah. of. Um, Child, like a childhood memory of, of fun looking creatures with, with fur or just really nice looking. And honestly, I can't find that much. You example. can't find a movie referring yeah. to that. Maybe well, you just. I mean, there's Star Wars, right? But yeah. it's pretty much the only one that is actually good. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And I, it actually works. So, Dumb, are you telling us that you're going to boldly go <laughs> where no one has gone before? Uh, I, I just might, I guess. Well, then. I well, thought then. that would get a better response. <laughs> it's pretty good. It's pretty good. Uh, yeah. So, that's, that's the research we're doing. Uh, I'm also... Uh, working on a prototype while uh, GF, the programmer, is not here for a couple of weeks. Uh, I'm I, I designed like 50 levels just to test out what we can do with it, and it's I think it's pretty fun. It's getting there. Like the the game is at that point now where you just design rows after rows after rows of level and putting the the mechanics are there, putting it through its paces and yeah. see what happens and if there are fun accidents and you discover mm -hmm. uh, mechanics and stuff like that. Yeah, and hopefully when, once uh, GF comes back, we're going to take... Because basically I'm not designing levels, I'm designing rooms. Mm -hmm. And we're going to take those rooms and uh, link them together procedurally so that every time you play, it's uh, it's random. Mm -hmm. uh, and figure out how, how it feels and where we should go, what rules we should put on the, the random generation of levels. And we'll see where that goes. So with the procedural uh, stuff, like, does this mean that you'll have to create a whole mess of rooms or is it something that the game will generate on its own according to specific rules that you will both lay down we're we're, we're gonna because there, there's there's a again a, a wide array of ways we can do that we could do it fully random but i don't think it's interesting uh so instead we're probably going to do a ton of rooms ton of different uh, levels their rooms but uh, different like for example if, if we're doing a spaceship we can have a an engine room a uh, security room a med bay stuff like that so we're going to design a ton of rooms that we can fit together to create spaceships probably and uh, maze ships maze ships or it could be space, space banks it could be whatever and we'll see We'll see how that goes. I think it's going to be more interesting because it's more uh, handcrafted in a way. It's not fully handcrafted, but it's uh, the pieces are handcrafted. And uh, what, but, but since you're back, you Justin, like what's happening for uh, Curses and Chaos right now oh. in, in Curses and Chaos Country? Yeah, more level creation. That's going to be uh, the largest sprint till the end for me. Uh, I'm probably actually going to have to have them all done before the month's end if we want to still uh, try and keep our fall release date because mm -hmm. let's face it it lasts until just before winter and that's right into december so yeah. we're gonna push really hard to make it happen but we'll see where we go so yeah it's gonna be a october november 
just crazy level creation and it's going well though i mean i get to see all the the monsters that john's coded so it's it's fun to see new stuff uh steph's backgrounds always look amazing soon we're gonna have all the uh boss monsters that paul animated too so they haven't changed in a while so it's good that they're still good <laughs> yeah <laughs> no but you know what though that is actually a, a really good sign of quality work is when you do something good and you take like a month away from it And then you come back and you're like, God, this still looks great. Yeah. That's usually a great sign. So are you uh, are you afraid of the um kind of the rush of games that's coming out and Oh all? yeah, but I mean like yeah, everything <laughs> everything is just like you can be afraid of so yeah. many things. It's the glut of games that come out. Yeah, of course. But um eh, it is what it is, you know, it's just one of many things that you can kind of you know kind of put your energy In, towards and feel bad about or just you know put it out of your mind and focus on what you have to do so circle of life <laughs> <laughs> yeah pretty much But so i think it's a good moment to to maybe try to go into uh top 10s or top 20 for the year also like it's uh sure it's got its advantages next to the competition I yeah yeah i mean you know again uh it's out of our control and uh you know we're really just going to focus on like creating the content and all the other stuff you know Let the cards fall where they may. Yeah. Cool. And and John just started working on a, a tool for um, for the cutscenes cut and, yeah. uh, and intro, so so we can actually have control for them because uh, that was a kind of a problem on Mercenary Kings. Everything was uh, hard coded, hard -coded and, yeah. <laughs> and all the uh, the art aspect had to go through uh, through programmer who were already over their heads with uh, just finishing the game so yeah so this time around and for next games we should have more control over that and that's gonna be cool mm -hmm. i really hope we can uh we managed to put what you did as a mock-up for the cutscene in the game as it is because it's it, it was fantastic well excellent uh, this I've got, I, i've got another topic though you you do go for it <laughs> justin yeah you've been playing a game <laughs> oh did i <laughs> yeah i started playing smash yeah how is it it's awesome yeah i mean yeah it's it's I mean, I'm playing it for the 3DS, and uh, it's, you know, I mean, what's there to say that hasn't been said already? Yet? Who's your oh, fighter? Yeah. So far, Mega Man. Yeah? He's amazing. <laughs> like, it, it's it's so weird to see how much he really kind of even feels like a Nintendo character. Like, they've kind of branded him in their own stylings a bit, but kept, it, like, a lot of the poses and the proportions just like the old sprite. He barely blinks too, right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, it's it's just I don't know. Like I'm having so much fun just playing Mega Man. Uh, the the amount of content in that game is just staggering. Like there's modes that are kind of RPG like where you just run around in like this huge uh, map with three other AIs and you're just collecting like temporary power ups for three minutes and then you like battle it out in the uh, in a brawl at the end using you, those things. Yeah, using those things, but you also collect other power-ups that you can customize uh characters just for that portion of the game with so you can add different moves so like for instance Mega Man has like a sh leaf shield move and a bomb move and he can throw metal blades but you can upgrade all of those for like all the different weapons he's had from all of the previous Mega Man games so like you can how, how many I don't know. That's just it. Like, I've just kind of tipped the iceberg on one character and I haven't seen the end of it. Nice. And there's like 50 characters. So you can imagine the kind of detail that they've put into it. And that's just one aspect of the game. So it's like, it's really fun to be playing. Like, we tend to kind of gravitate towards like old retro and obscure things. Mm -hmm. Like, I think we're kind of like that. But it's fun to be playing something that's like in the mainstream and... It's also a game that had like huge uh, production values yeah. into it, and it shows. Uh, I really like this one, also as opposed to the last one, because the last one had like so many cutscenes, and it's like I I don't care how many bananas <laughs> Donkey Kong has left, you know, it's just unimportant to me. And yet they were really well done. Like I'm not knocking them. It's just it felt like something that was just kind of in or forced in, and in this game. There's like an absence of it, so you just hit the ground running playing the game. And some people complain, but on a personal level, I think it's great. So I'm kind of curious also to see how the Wii version is going to yeah. differentiate. They announced and it today for the 21st, 21st of November. Are they going to be compatible? Or? Yeah, there's going to be crossplay, so that's going to be cool too. Uh, I don't know. It, it shows like it, it shows like there's a lot of love that was put into the game, and we've always kind of firmly believed that it that 
always reflects in the final product. If people look like they had fun making it, it usually yep. cut from, you know comes through in the wash. So I guess the big question that I have left is uh, what happens when Kirby absorbs Megaman? Uh, you know, it's right? <laughs> just a helmet. I haven't again, like there's so much stuff to do. I haven't even gotten around to it. Like I've played maybe, you know, not even a quarter of the okay. of the characters and I've only been playing since well, Sunday. Report back next week with uh, the answer to my question. Then. Definitely. <laughs> <laughs> yes. I'm curious to know what's the Mega Man's ending. No, he doesn't. That's the thing. There's no, there's no real ending. It's just like you, well, there's different modes and stuff mm-hmm. too, but like you get through, you get the trophy, the credits roll and you get more content that that's unlocked. Fired. Yeah. See like that, for me is anyway it's 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 totally fine like there's a lot of stuff that's actually like in game too like you play Mega Man stage and like the yellow devil comes yeah. down and nice. he's kind of an obstacle and every once in a while you'll see like maybe a random enemy in another mode from Mega Man games and you're just like oh yeah that's cool so I don't know I feel like the the whole story of Smash Brothers is kind of told more through the game and the the actual gameplay than you know a cutscene that's thrown you know randomly around so yeah I, I like it speaking of Mega Man I think I'm gonna go back to play to playing uh, Mega Man X as research yes because that game is good the wall jump is Perfect. Yeah, yeah, it's pretty awesome. <laughs> I remember being, I remember freaking out, like buying a, a Game Pro magazine for just the page that had like that was on Mega Man X, and it, it had like just three screenshots and one drawing of Mega Man, and I think I folded it and put it in my heart. <laughs> like, Let's finish this podcast and I'll go play Mega Man X. <laughs> so uh, yes, it's a shorter podcast this week, but we just wanted to come back in because it, it's been long enough since we. Uh, since we made an episode, so uh, we thank if you're still listening to us, uh, we thank you and we love you. But it's a full episode just without Carl's portion. Yeah, miss that's true. Yeah, love you, miss you, Carl. Yeah, love you, miss you. <laughs> yeah, hey. Carl, uh, Gotham Academy. His book is uh, the first issue is finally out, so uh, go out and buy that. It's really good. How about that uh, Gotham Academy launch party, though, eh? Yeah, that's, uh, <laughs> that's you know a tale what? for another story. Well, yeah. well, let's just say that they made, they made a fancy, a fancy yet uh, a homegrown lunch at a bar for Gotham Academy, and uh, lots of drinks were had, uh, as if maybe we drank like uh, we felt we were younger than we actually were. And uh, it was harder to go to go back from that. Then there's also right. academy style. Yeah. Academy style, yes. The same, the way the young characters in the book could never drink. But still, go by that. And there was a, a fun story about it. About uh, Justin almost stole something <laughs> from uh, from the launch. But that tale we'll have to wait for another time. Yeah, we'll wait for Carl to come back and have his take on it too. Yeah. So uh, thanks for listening <laughs> to us. Uh, if you enjoyed the podcast, please consider leaving a review, uh, a review on iTunes because that gets us more seen and then it gets us higher in the rankings and hopefully more people download and enjoy. And then we'll get ratings. rich, right? That's how it works. Uh, if only We're, our <laughs> our primary resource only has to be uh, making quality games right now. Yeah, so we're rich in spirit. Right, right. I keep so. forgetting about rich in yeah. stars. Mm. Yes, exactly. Yeah. Rich in stars, five stars or less. Thanks, thanks a lot. You can uh, follow uh, the company Tribute Games uh, at Tribute Games on Twitter and on Facebook, uh, and, and myself. You can follow me uh, at Enig Belzil. What, what about you guys? Uh, I'm at Dumb Two D on Twitter. Uh, Justin underscore Seer at JGS Buta on Twitter. Thanks for uh, listening to us and uh, yeah. have your ears ready for next week because there's another episode coming next week for sure. 